My name is Davy, and welcome to Book Connoisseur. So today I have my favorite books of 2023, and I had a hard time <laughs> narrowing down this list to 10. So I have two honorable mentions that I would like to start with. First being Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart and I'll pop a picture of the cover right here. This book is about a boy coming of age and he's figuring out his sexuality and who he is as a person and his single mom is not a great mom and um, sends him away with these two men and we don't really know who they are in the beginning it plays from there and it goes back and forth from mungo with these two men on a camping trip to how did he end up with these two men on the camping trip i gave it a four out of five stars but this book has really stuck with me since i read it and i got it out from the library which is why i don't have a copy of it right now and i read it very very quickly it's dark i would check trigger warnings before you dive into it but I just wanted to mention that one here. And the second honorable mention I have is Confusion by Elizabeth Jane Howard, which is the third book in the Cazalet Chronicles. And I gave this book a five out of five stars. The reason it is not on my top 10 is because I haven't finished the series yet. So maybe I'll like the fifth book better. I don't know. Maybe it will make it to my best books of 2024, but we'll see. All right, let's get into it. I did order these from 10 through 1, so we'll go from there. Number 10 is Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Um, you probably see this book making the rounds on booktube. Uh, it's set in a small Irish town in the 1980s and it follows a coal merchant as he approaches the busy season, which is around Christmas because it's cold and people need more coal. Um, and he makes a discovery when he goes to deliver coal to the local convent. What I liked about this book, one was how short it was and how impactful it could be in such a short amount of time. It really is a commentary on Irish history and I believe they're called the Magdalene. I'll have to look it up. I'll pop the name right here. They're Magdalene Homes or something like that where unwed mothers were sent to get away from their family. Their family sent them there because of shame and it really hits home how shame-centered Catholicism can be in Irish culture when it has to do with Catholicism. And I really appreciate the critical nature of this book. Number nine, I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. Now this is also a very short, quick book. And what I loved about this was how experimental it was. We have an unnamed narrator who is basically immersed in social media culture and she relentlessly follows uh, the man she wants to be with and this man's partner, the woman I'm obsessed with, and those are the two terms she refers to them as. And it's very short, like the chapters are also short. Sometimes they're a little bit longer and then they'll quickly go through a few pages and it's almost like, kind of like a diary entry um, type format. I read this for my book club with Lord in the Books and someone in that chat, uh, mentioned that it reads as if you're scrolling through Instagram. Um, sometimes you stop and pause and interact with something a little more and sometimes you just blow right through it. I think this is an excellent commentary on social media culture and our priorities nowadays. And we have access to so much information and access to people's whereabouts at all times because they're sharing it on social media. I also wanted to point out that a common theme for my books in 2023 were narrators that I did not like. She is not likable and I think that makes the book that much more powerful. Number eight, The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. And this you've probably seen around. Um, this tells the story 
of a girl, Lucrezia, in the 1500s, who gets married off, but she's not a marrying type of person. She's very curious about nature. She's interested in the things around her and wants to do her own thing. And her husband is controlling. Maggie O'Farrell bases all on this portrait that you can see in the background here of the real wife of the Grand Duke of Ferrara. And it was really incredible. I love this book. If you like historical fiction set in the 1500s, or Renaissance, this is for you. Number seven is Kala by Colin Walsh. And I'll pop a picture of the cover over here because I also read this as a library book. And Kala follows a group of friends in a small town Ireland, three boys and three girls. It's a dual timeline where you get the story of them as teenagers and then them coming back to their hometown as adults. And what happened as teenagers, one of their friends goes missing. It's a mystery, a thriller. What's really interesting is it plays with time in an interesting way. Kala is the nickname for their friend who goes missing. Kala in Sanskrit also means time. And I thought that was a very clever use of the word and uh, choosing it as the nickname for this character and how time in this book sort of doesn't exist in the way we know it to be and it's subtle it's not like a hit you in the face kind of time travel story in fact i don't even think i've seen anyone mention this in their reviews of kala but uh, that was my favorite part of the story and you pick up these little tidbits of is time really how we know it to be or not number six is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. It's also a very short book and it is weird. It follows this couple, Miri and Leah, and Leah is a, I think, marine biologist and she goes on a submarine mission and her submarine gets lost. And basically, we don't know what happened, but suddenly she returns much later than expected and she's not the person she was when she left. And this book follows mostly Miri's perspective of after the submarine and Leah's perspective of during the submarine, submarine mission, I should say. In essence, this is a love story and I think it's really weird and really beautiful. And the ending, Grab my heart and if you're looking for a uh, not romance genre love story for February, I would recommend this book. Number five, Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. And I read this because it was on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list and short list. I'm not totally sure if it was on the short list, but I think it might have been. This follows a teacher during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. It covers her interactions with some of her students, patrons at the pub that her family owns, as well as her alcoholic mother. She goes on to have a romantic relationship. All of these storylines sort of converge and intermingle and it was really, really interesting and a really great read. And I highly recommend it for people that like surprise endings or historical fiction. I learned a lot about the troubles in Ireland by reading this book. So if you're a fan of Dairy Girls, this isn't comedy, but you get a little bit more of the history. Okay, getting to the end. Number four is Creep by Miriam Gerba. And the subtitle is Accusations and Confessions. Um, this is a nonfiction short story collection all written by Miriam Gerba. And the word creep and everything it stands for interweaves itself throughout these essays and everything from the fog that creeps in in the morning to the creeps who appropriate her Mexican culture to the creep who assaulted her in broad daylight. I really felt connected with this book and thought it was really masterfully written and I think if you like nonfiction writing this is definitely a book for you. In this description I'll link a podcast that I listened to called The Stacks where 
Tracy interviews Miriam Gerba and I really love being able to find podcasts with the authors I'm reading. It helps shed light on their process and their thoughts on their book. Number three is The Girls by John Bowen. Now this book was written in 1986 and it follows a couple who live a quiet life. They're sort of cottagecore life on the English countryside in a small English village. They have some complications in their relationship and one of them falls pregnant. And these two women decide to keep the pregnancy and keep the baby and raise them as their son. This story tells of the complications that happen when the father of the baby comes a knock. Yeah, I really loved, I loved this book. I thought it was really concise and really well written. And this is another one of the McNally editions. Um, it's really beautifully made. It's inside French flap. Um, yeah. Okay, so my top two books could really go in any order. Um, on a different day, they might have been reversed, but uh, when I was figuring out my list, I decided to put them in this order. And so my second book is This Chonker, Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. And this book is very close to my heart. Um, it tells the story of a family living in Kerala, which is the southern tip of India. Over several generations, they established their home on this uninhabitable land. And it tells the story of that land developing and what it gives to the family and how they stray from the land, but it always brings them back. This book was so incredibly beautiful and it's special to me in particular because the town that's established here is not far from where my grandfather's family is from. So a lot of the language and the culture was very familiar to me and that made it all the more special. It will be a book I return to time and time again, but I don't think you need to have that familial connection to it to appreciate this story and how far this family comes. And what I loved about this book was that it also had a surprise ending that I was not expecting and that made it even better. And number one, my best book of the year for 2023 was Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berendt. And this was written in 1994. So it's kind of an old book. There's even a movie and I still haven't watched it, really like to watch, but the premise of this book is nonfiction. So John Berendt, the author, travels to Savannah, Georgia. And this is the story of the people he meets along the way and the true crime investigation he finds himself in the middle of while writing this book, which is just sort of happenstance and blows my mind. Yeah, it was really, really good. This is one of the first books I read in 2023 and it has stuck with me the whole year and I think about it still. Um, yeah, I picked this up blindly at Powell's bookstore in Portland, Oregon and did not disappoint. Highly recommend it if you're a fan of nonfiction. Um, even if you're a fan of true crime or just crime novels in general, this really doesn't read like a nonfiction. I feel like it reads much more like a fiction story. It's sort of unbelievable that it's true. It contains one of my favorite characters that I've ever read about, a trans woman who he encounters and becomes part of his daily life. I forget her name, but I'll insert her name over here. And she actually plays herself in the movie, which I think is incredible. Um, so yeah, those are my best books of 2023. Uh, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate any support. If you could like, subscribe, comment. Um, what was your favorite book of 2023? Any conversations you want to have, let me know. Uh, and I'll see you again soon for another booktube video. Bye!